Hey everyone, welcome to another Flux tutorial. Um, in this video I kind of want to go over some of the changes that I've made in the plugin update, uh, as well as the new animation system that I've introduced. So, uh, for starters, if you haven't seen some of the previous videos uh, regarding the animation system, I'd highly recommend going and watching that first before coming having a look at the update so that you can kind of get a better understanding of what's going on. Uh, so for starters, I've moved one very important value around. Um, the default custom data values for your materials will now be inside the meshes um, array. Originally it was up the top, which meant that you could only really define one set of custom data values for all of your meshes, but now you can define it per mesh. So that's the reason why that's moved, and unfortunately if you do get this update you're probably going to have to go and move these, uh, or put these values back in if you're using them. Uh, and yeah, so that that's essentially all that's really changed as far as moving values around. Uh, with the new animation system, the old version should still work as far as I'm aware, except there is a new version that will make it a lot easier to work with. So I'm going to go over that now. Um, again, if you haven't watched the previous video on the animation tutorial, I highly recommend going and watching that, um, that first and then coming and watching this one, because uh, I'm going to go over pretty quickly, assuming that everyone kind of has seen those so they kind of know what's going on a little bit. So what I've got here is a new just called it animation update level and it's just a empty world with empty room it's got our bird mesh in here um, and it shouldn't be animating and there we go we just have some very static birds flying around our scene so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can use the new animation pipeline to make these um, and what the new version allows you to do, uh, I'll just open up this other level for a second, is add some variety to the animation. So originally they would all just loop the same animation uh, constantly. Um, you can still do that in the new system, except in this one you'll see that some of the birds are flapping their wings fast, some of them are kind of gliding, and then they change between those. Uh, randomly as they're flying along. It's a very subtle effect, but it does make them look a lot more realistic as they're kind of gliding around as well as flapping their wings at the same time. So I'm going to show you how you can set up this. I've called it uh, a various animation system. Um, and yeah, let's jump into it. So we've got our static wings, wings on our birds here. So let's get them animating using the uh, the new system. So all we need to do is make a material just how you would in the old one. I can call this M Raven Vat. Let's just call it that. Uh, I'm going to open this up. Very, very similar to the old one. You add a material function call and blocks. Now, this is the old node here, it's been renamed to that legacy, you'll see that this should look very familiar. You plug in your position and normal texture and you plug in your normal and world position offset into your output. Um, except this has been replaced with this V2 version in the new one. So this is the one that you want to use for the new animation system. And you'll see that this has no real exposed nodes. So you might wonder how do I set up my textures? Well, I'll show you that in a second, but it's a lot more automatic than it used to be. So, same thing, we're going to plug in our normal, uh, we're going to plug in our world position offset, um, and I'm going to go ahead and change this so that uh, we're using instance static meshes, and turn off, oh, we want to turn off our tangent space normals as well, exactly the same as the first, um, first video. Uh, let me just turn off my notifications that are coming through quickly. Yep. Uh, so, same thing, we can plug in our normal map sample. So I'm just going to go texture sample. 
and we're going to use our Raven normal map. I'm going to uh, transform this from tangent space to world space. Cool, so this should look very similar. Uh, let's go and add our texture sample for our diffuse. Uh, what do we call it? Raven D. Plug that in like that. Awesome. So now we can apply this material to our Raven mesh. And that that is all that we'll do for now. So in this new um, meshes layout here, we've got a new button down here called Use Animation. If you don't tick this and you're using the old animation system, it should still work. It should still animate using the material as it was. But in the new version, you want to tick this if you're going to use animation. And it'll give you this animation data struct that you put in here. So to generate one of these uh, animation data assets, all we're going to do is we're going to find our mesh. We're going to open up our animation that we want to play. I'll show you how to loop a single one in the new system before I show you the various system. Uh, it's exactly the same. We're just gonna just gonna call this tutorial lap loop. Uh, it's exactly the same in the sense that you just press make that animation and it'll just make you some textures. Uh, except in this one now, it'll make you your your position and your normal textures, but it'll also output this lap loop anim data for you, um, which is the thing that you wanted to plug into this. So we can just take this and we can plug it in there and now our mesh knows about all of our animation data. Um, if you use the new Raven, uh, if you use the new um, Blocks Vertex V2 node in your material, it'll automatically pass these position and normal textures through to your material for you. So you don't actually need to touch that at all as long as this animation data is hooked up. Uh, you can press use random start time if you want them to start at different times, obviously. Uh, and you can see that it's built some animations here. So it, when, it, when I built the animation using the button up the top in the, in the animation viewer, it's automatically put that flap loop in as an animation in this asset. It's figured out how many frames it has, it's set up all of that for you. Um, and it's got a rate scale here so you can change this if you want them to animate faster on this animation for example. Um, and yeah that's pretty much all that you need to do, just plug it in and it's ready to go. Um, so I said that there's two versions, there's the loop single and there's the play various. Um, so this one's just going to constantly loop our flap loop animation. So if I, I think that this is all correct, if I just hit play now, should be able to put this in here, and we now have our birds working as they were in the past. Now one cool thing that I've added over here is that you've now got this animation rate scale. Because of the new animation system, it's actually nodes that you can just change these um, there's, there's some blueprint functions that allow you to just change the animation rate on all of your um, animations just by just um, blueprints. Um, so I'll just open the level blueprint showing where I'm doing that. So you've got this update boy default anim rate for all groups and I'm just plugging in the slider values that I have here. That's just making them all animate faster because the system is now aware of the, uh, the animations that they're playing. Cool, so that's uh, that's playing a single one. Now, what if we wanted to create the, the better looking version where they're, um, just show it off again quickly. The version where they're kind of flapping their wings and then they're gliding and then some of them are flapping quickly. How can we play multiple animations at once? Well, there's actually a really great thing in Unreal called an animation composite that I'm gonna show you right now. Um, where is my raven? So I've got one set up here. And I'm just going to create another one so that I can show you how to do it. So let's say I got my three animations. I got just a flap loop, and I've got my flap loop fast, where he's going a bit faster. All I've done here is I've turned up the rate scale by three. 
and then I've got the flat loop slow, which is kind of the glide. I've just kind of slowed down the animation to a factor of 0 0.2. Now you can actually, these don't need to be just rate scale affected animations. You can plug in entirely new animations and it'll still play the, it'll kind of pick them randomly between them as it, as it goes. So I said about the animation composite. So you can create one of those just by right click animation animation composite. Uh, you want to pick the skeleton, in this case it's our raven. I'm just going to call this uh, tutorial raven animals. Now what you want to do with this animation composite and what this actually is, is I can grab multiple animations. So I can grab my, my loop here. And I can grab the next one, I can grab the fast one, I can stick it after this and it, what it's going to do is it's going to play one and then it'll play the other one. I'm going to put my slow in there as well, so my animation composite here is just going to cycle through all of my animations just one after the other and I could plug this into a skeletal mesh and it'll play it exactly like you're seeing it up here. But the other use for this is that you can kind of define a group of animations. So here I've got three animations. If I open up my animation composite and I press make that animation now, uh, let's call this uh, tutorial Flavarius. This is going to make my position and normal texture as well as my animation data. Except this one, if I open up the animation data here, this contains three animations in here. So you can see that it's automatically taking in my flap loop, my flap loop fast, my flap loop slow, and it's made new animations for each of those. And I could set this back to you know, play single and I could just play the flap loop slow. If I decided that I didn't want to play that anymore, I could just change this to flap loop regular. Um, or I can now swap this over to play various because we've got different animations built into the same um, same animation data structure. Uh, and what this does, and it'll build like this by default if you're using an animation composite to build them, uh, it'll add all of your animations into here, flap loop, flap loop fast and flap loop slow, and it'll tell you how many times do I want to play this. So. When I press play and I spawn my birds now, it's going to pick one of these three animations by default for every single bird. And it's going to pick a number between the min loops and the max loops and it's going to play it that many times. Once it's finished playing it as many times as it's picked, it's going to go again and it's going to say give me a different one of these three and it's going to pick the min loops, max loops and it's going to play it that many times again. So. For example, I could say maybe I want to play the regular flap loop two to four times. And then after I've played this flap loop two to four times, I want to play either the flap loop fast or the flap loop slow. And I'll play the fast one like six to eight times, for example, and I might play the slow one only once. So it's going to come in and it's going to pick one of these randomly, and then when it's done, it's going to pick a different one randomly. Um, and it can pick the same one twice, just so that you're aware of that. It doesn't, it isn't exclusive as to um, playing this one and then it won't play this one again. It, it could play the same one twice because I just felt it looked a little bit better. Um, cool, so that's, that's that. Um, yeah, so if we now take this animation and we stick it in here, we'll see that we now have full screen that you can see that they're kind of gliding some of them are flapping some of them are going slow some of them are going fast so you can get a lot more kind of variety in your animations you know you can make this you can make five different variations of a of a fish swimming for example and it would look a lot more realistic and a lot more like a fish than just looping the single same animation for all of your fish so so you get a little bit more control over what your um, animations are going to be doing. Cool, so 
as I said, you could just go into this, you can change all these values as much as you want to kind of play around with how much they, they occur and how many times they loop. Um, and you can also change, you know, the rate scale of your animations here as well. So you can see that because I set my my animation to um, three in the original um, flap loop here. Let me just full screen this. Um, so you know, because I open this animation here and I put like a um, I put a rate scale of three. It's actually found that rate scale and it's plugged it into here, so it knows that it's just playing 37 frames at, uh, at a three times scale. So I, I recommend building all of your animation data through animation composites, kind of group them up so that you could just press the make that animation button again and it'll automatically output them all. And yeah, I hope this helps. I'd like to see some people make some more variety in their animations. Um, Sorry if this goes over your head a little bit, but uh, it is a very powerful system, and powerful systems are often a bit clunky to use, so good luck with that. Um, feel free to send me any questions, um, feel free to send me any progress updates, I'm always happy to see what people are, are using my, my plugin for, and yeah, thank you for all your support, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.